two years ago, Michael met Tiffany, and she says he's the sweetest man in the world and would never hurt anyone. But Michael is a registered sex offender for life for the attempted rape of a three-year-old girl. He claims he is completely innocent of this heinous crime and was forced into taking a plea. And Tiffany believes him. She wants him to pass his lie detector test so she can get married and have children without anyone judging him for being a sex offender. Take a look. When I first met Michael, I fell really in love with him. He was really sweet. He was really kind. He was really lovable. And he was honest with me right away, and he told me he was a sex offender. People call Michael like a monster, how disgusting he is, how terrible he is, and how dishonest he is, and he's not that person that people say he is. We're engaged, and me and Michael can't even live together, and it's all because of the false accusation. I want to marry him, I want to be able to have kids with him, and I want him to be able to go to the kids' events and, and you know, stand in front of everybody and say, you know, I'm their dad, and not be scared about that he's a sex offender. When Michael clears his name, I want everybody to see who he truly is and not the sex offender that everybody thinks he is. Honestly, there's no possible way that Michael could fail because because I know Michael didn't do it. And he, he needs his name cleared. It's affected me a lot because I had to take over Michael's baggage. You know, getting embarrassed looks like, well, why are you with somebody who is like that? Why aren't you with somebody who's normal? And it's because I love Michael. And I know he didn't do what people say he did. He's not a sex offender. The man that Michael is, is he's really caring. He's kind to people. He, he wouldn't do that stuff. He wouldn't be a sex offender. He's, he's not. Michael was my knight in shining armor. He did save me from a terrible, terrible thing that happened to me. And he got me out of it. He saved me, and that's the person Michael really is. So my question is, why are you dating this young girl? Because we fell in love. 25 years is a huge difference in age. I agree. It, it is. is. And then here you are with your, you know, luggage, baggage right, that right. you're bringing into the relationship, and she's a young girl who's just starting out in life, and you're kind of putting a big brick on her ass, right? Kind of, yeah. No matter what you say, yeah. like she's saying, oh, I want to prove, I want him to prove so he can be around kids and nobody looks at him that way. And it's, but nothing's going to change that. So why would you do that to a young girl who has her whole life ahead of her to have her go through the grind of being with a registered sex offender? I'm happy to be here with you, Michael, but you need to prove your name because I don't think I could take your baggage anymore. You know how half of my family does not like it. Yeah. Question number one, why are you with Michael? Because I love him and I know he cares about me and I know he, you know, tries to take care of me and tries to help me through, through some tough times. And there's nobody, uh, no male in their 20s that could do that for you? My point is, why, why are you dating a guy that's an ex-con who's 25 years older than you? To be honest, I don't know. Maybe because I love him. I, I, I know you say you love him, but you know that life's going to be tough just by being with him. Yeah. And you're willing to just grind it out day after day, year after year. I'll do anything for somebody I love and I care about. You'll do anything. Would you always tell that person the truth? Yeah. Would you expect that person always to tell you the truth? Yeah. yeah. Have you told her the truth about your whole situation? Yes, sir. Okay. Have you ever seen my show before? Yes, I have. I'm yeah. actually a big fan of yours. Oh, thank so. you. <laughs>
Have you ever noticed that we've done this exact story before? Yeah. And I don't know if it's ever turned out good. Maybe once I do remember, right? Yeah. I do remember one guy. He, he it turned out pretty good. But most of the time, it's not good. Because most guys aren't going to sacrifice a decade of freedom for something they didn't do. And prison is no walk in the park. So if you didn't do anything, wouldn't you roll the dice and say, no way, I'm going to take my chance because I didn't do anything. I want to go to trial. Mm -hmm. So now he was, he's, he's convicted, right? Mm -hmm. He did his time. Mm -hmm. Our society has deemed him that he's paid his price mm -hmm. for the crime that he committed, right? Mm -hmm. So he gets a chance to go on and live his life. Mm -hmm. But it comes with a lot of conditions because of the crime he committed. Can't be around kids. You can't move so close to a school. You got to do. You got to register. You got to let the the government know where you're at at all mm. times, right? That's got to be a big pain in the ass, right? It is. Right. And then everybody says, "Hey, you're dating a sex offender." Yeah. And what do you say about that when they say, "Hey, you know, like your mom, oh, you know, what are you doing with this sex offender?" What do you say? And you can't be just, "I love him." Um, sometimes it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. And it's hurtful. What if he's lied to you the whole time? That he did do this? Uh, I'm sorry to say it, but... Go back home. Go back home. Did you ever do anything sexual with the child... with the child in question? He answered no. Did you commit any of the sex crimes that you were charged with? He answered no. The results came back the same to each question, and it came back that Michael did not tell the truth. And you know, a lot of times with children, especially small children, there's no evidence, right? It's just this happened. But in this case, there's a lot of physical evidence. Yes, there was, Steve. So this is a post-conviction sex offender test, and I've discussed this many times on the show. I hold advanced certifications in post-conviction sex offender testing, and when someone denies the act, we test them, did you do it? It's called an instant offense test. So that's what I did to Michael. I gave him the instant offense test. So let's go to a chart just to show you a sample of the reactions that Michael had. So here is one of Michael's reactions. As you can see, Steve, it's not significant. It's dramatic when I ask him the question about having contact with that child. To pass this test, Michael needs to be plus six or higher. He's a minus 16. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Listen, I, again, what I, what, I, what I stated earlier, you know, society has decided he served his punishment, but when you commit a crime like this, uh, you know, he, he pled guilty to it. Mm -hmm. He failed lie detector tests when the police mm -hmm. gave it to him uh, back when this crime was being investigated. Mm -hmm. He comes here, which I think is the most reliable lie detector test in the country, mm -hmm. and he fails it, and he fails it badly. Mm -hmm. But he, he's a free man, and he can walk about and do what he wants. But why in the world would you want that for you and your kids? I wouldn't. I wouldn't nope. turn my back for two seconds. If this guy was around my neighborhood, I would never turn my back on this guy. Never. What do, you, what do you want to do? When we get back, you're getting your stuff, yeah. and you're going. Yeah. Good luck, yeah. I'm sorry, but it's best to know the truth. Do you like what you see? All new episodes are coming, and you do not want to miss out. Click subscribe now. Thank you.